In this video, we'll learn how to find the distance between two points in 3D. Now 3D works very similar to how 2D works. So we'll look at 2D and 3D together. In 2D, the formula, the distance formula for two points A and B is like this. For two points A, X1, Y1 and B, X2, Y2, the distance between them, AB, that's given as square root of X1 minus X2 square plus Y1 minus Y2 square. We can do the same thing in 3D. If the two points are A and B, where the coordinates are x1, y1, z1 and x2, y2, z2, adding the third coordinate because of the third axis, the distance becomes AB, that's square root of x1 minus x2 square plus y1 minus y2 square plus z1 minus z2 square. This third thing gets added, the rest of it remains the same. Now let's try to understand this formulae visually. Let's go with 2D first and take a simpler example. Let's start with origin as one of the points. So if origin is one point and the other point is here, the distance between them is this. So we need to find the length of this. How do we do that? Well, let's go from origin to this point. Let's do that. Let's move along the X axis and then along the Y axis. So now we reach this point. Look at this triangle. This is a right angle triangle. And because this is the right angle triangle, we can use Pythagoras theorem. So let's do that. Using Pythagoras theorem, we can say that this length square plus this length square equals to this length square. This is what we need to find. So if this point is a x1 y1 and this is origin 0 comma 0, this length is the x coordinate. That's x1. This is the y coordinate. That's y1. This means this length hypotenuse square o a square that's given as x1 square plus y1 square. And if we move things around, if we don't start with the origin, if we have two different points, x1, y1 and x2, y2, what are the lengths? Well, this length is going to be x1 minus x2, the difference between their x coordinates. This length is y1 minus y2, the difference between their y coordinates. This gives us the hypotenuse AB as square root of this length square plus this length square. That's x1 minus x2 square plus y1 minus y2 square. And this is how we prove the distance formula for two dimensions. Now let's see how things work when we move from two dimensions to three dimensions. Let's do that. Now we are in 3D and now to reach this point, we have to move along the X axis, the Y axis and the Z axis. Let's go ahead and do that. We move along the X axis, then along the Y axis and then along the Z axis. Now we have reached from origin to this point. Now pause the video, think about how what we did in 2D can be used in 3D to get to this length. How will you figure out this purple length using blue, green and yellow? Okay, let's do this together. In 2D, we had this right angle triangle. But in 3D, using this right angle triangle, we reach only till this point. We still have to cover this distance along the Z axis. And if you look closely, you'll see one more right angle triangle here. If I draw this, you can see that we have not one, but two right angle triangles. We'll first figure out the hypotenuse for this right angle triangle and then use it because that's going to be the length for this triangle and then use it as one of the lengths and figure out the hypotenuse for this other right angle triangle. This will give us the length that we need. Let's do that. Let's break it down. First, Let's focus on this triangle. Okay. What's the length of this hypotenuse? This is our X coordinate. This is our Y coordinate. We're moving from origin to this point. So X1, Y1, zero, because we're looking at the X, Y plane. The Z coordinate is zero here. This is zero comma zero comma zero. This length is X1. This is Y1. And the hypotenuse is X square plus Y square square root. So we can write D square. D is the hypotenuse. That's x1 square plus y1 square. All right. So now we know this length. Let's move to 3D. So we know this length and we know this length. That's our z coordinate. We can figure out this hypotenuse now. So that's going to be, this is x1, y1, z1. And we just figured out this length. That's D. This is our z1. So this hypotenuse, this purple length, that's going to be square root of d square plus z1 square. 
and d square is x1 square plus y1 square. So our length OA, that's going to be square root of x1 square plus y1 square plus z1 square. And this was a special case because we started from origin. If we did not start from origin, if we had two different points, x1, y1, z1, and x2, y2, z2, our distance formula would be this. The length AB, that's going to be equal to the square root of the sums of squares of differences of these coordinates. All right. And this is our distance formula in 3D. Let's practice. Let's look at the first problem. Distance between P1, minus 3, 4 and Q, minus 1, 4, 2. Now we can use the distance formula or we can visualize these points. Let's visualize because that's more fun. So where's 1, minus 3, 4? So let's plot it. This is 1 along the x-axis, minus 3, which means going down, and then 4, which means coming up along the z-axis. So this is 1, minus 3, 4. All right. Where's minus 1, 4, 2? So minus 1 and 4. And then for 2, we go up along the z-axis. So these are our two points. Blue one is P and yellow one is Q. Okay. So we need to find the distance between PQ, which means we need to find the length of this. So what's the length of this segment? So how do we figure this length out? Pause the video, try visualizing. Okay. If we see this from above, this is what we see. We can form a right angle triangle here. Let's do that. Let's form our first right angle triangle. Using the first triangle, we can go from blue to this point, but we still haven't reached the yellow point. We need one more right angle triangle. Let's draw that one as well. This is our second right angle triangle. Now our both triangles are complete. Now we'll use Pythagoras theorem twice to figure the length that we need. Okay. So for this triangle, what's the hypotenuse? Let's do that. This length is because we're moving from minus three to four from minus three to four. This length is seven units. And this one difference between these two coordinates, the X coordinates one and minus one, this is going to be two. So this is two, this is seven applying Pythagoras theorem. We'll get 49 plus four. That's 53. So we'll get square root of 53 as the distance. So what's this length root 53? That's this length. Okay. But now we need to use the Pythagoras theorem again because this is the hypotenuse that we really need. So let's do that. This length is root 53. This is the difference in their Z coordinates, four and two, that's going to be two. So this is two, this is root 53. Applying Pythagoras theorem again, we'll get four plus 53, that's 57. So the answer is root 57. This is the distance between P and Q. Now let's double check this using our formula as well. The formula is square root of sums of squares of differences of their coordinates. So the first difference is between the X coordinate one and minus one. Next is minus three and four. Next is four and two. So the difference between one and minus one is two minus three and four is seven and four and two is two. So two square is four, seven square is 49 and two square again is four. 4 plus 4, 8 plus 49, that's root 57. So we are right. The answer is square root of 57. Now, sure, this is faster, but I think this is much more fun. Let's solve one more problem. Let me clean this up. This is the next one. Show that the points P, Q, and R are collinear. The points are minus 2, 3, 5, 1, 2, 3, and 7, 0, minus 1. Pause the video. Figure out how to approach this problem. All right, let's do this together. Let's mark down the points first. Let's mark two of them. Uh, we'll mark P, which is minus two, three, five. So this is minus two, three, five, minus two, and then three, and then five units along the Z axis. Let's mark R as well, seven, zero, minus one. So this is R, seven, zero, which is which means we don't move along the Y axis and then minus one, which means we're in the basement. So this is the next point. This is P and this is R. Now let's mark Q one, two, and three. This is our Q. Now, can you see that all three of them are actually on the straight line? If we have this tool with us, we can show that these points are collinear, but usually we don't have tools handy. We have to find a different way out 
to figure out whether these points are collinear or not. Let's find a way to mathematically prove that these points are actually collinear. Do you want to pause and think a little more about this? How will you approach this? What should happen in this 3D world so that these three points are collinear? Think about it. Okay. Now, to get a better sense, let's not have these three points. Let's change the coordinates of one of them. Let me slightly move the coordinate of this point. Now these three points are not collinear. What has changed? Let's mark the line segments. This, this, and this. Okay. So we have these three line segments. We have PQ, QR, and PR. What has changed? Okay. Let me go back to the collinear one. Okay. All right. Now the points are collinear. Now they're not. Collinear and now they're not. Now can you see what we can use here? So what we have to realize here is that if the three points are not collinear, they will definitely form a triangle. Three non-collinear points always form a triangle. But if they are collinear, if they are in fact in the same line, along the same line, they will never form a triangle. You cannot form a triangle using three collinear points. And what's so special about triangles? Well, sum of two sides is always greater than the third side, which means we can now use our distance formula to figure out the lengths of these three sides and check whether they are actually forming a triangle or not. So let's do that. If these three points are in fact collinear, they will not form a triangle. This side length and this side length will be exactly equal to the sum of these two will be exactly equal to the third side. Now let's find the lengths. The first length will be D1, that's PQ, that's square root of minus 2 minus 1, that's 3. 3 square is 9. 3 minus 2 is 1. 1 square is 1. 5 minus 3 is 2. 2 square is 4. So 9 plus 1, 10 plus 4, 14. Root 14. This first length is root 14. Let's figure out the remaining two. D2, that's QR. That's 1 minus 7, that difference is 6. So 6 square is 36. 0 and 2, the difference is 2. 2 square is 4. Minus 1 and 3, the difference is 4. 4 square is 16. So 36 plus 4 is 40, plus 16 is 56. So this is root 56. What's the third length? That's PR. So minus 2 and 7, difference is 9. 9 square is 81. 0 and 3, 3. 3 square is 9. Minus 1 and 5, so 6. 6 square is 36. 81 plus 9 is 90. 90 plus 36 is 126. So these are our three lengths. Now, at first glance, they look different. They look like they don't add up. But root 56, that's root 4 times 14. That's actually 2 root 14. And root 126, if we simplify this as well, that's root 9 times 14. That's 3 root 14. And now we can see that d1 plus d2 is actually equal to d3. We have mathematically proved, we have calculated the lengths of these three. And we see that if we add two of them, we actually get the third length. This means d1 plus d2 is d3. This means they can't form a triangle. This means they have to be collinear.